Right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, I've been joined in the commentary box by the current leader of the British Hill Climb Championship, Alex Summers. Um, welcome back to Harewood, Alex. And uh, not a bad day, really. Yeah, not too bad today. I think we uh trying to work out where we can make improvements over last time because we weren't quite quick enough uh, when we came here in May. But uh, yeah, just trying different things, different lines, gears, you know, all that sort of stuff. That's that's what, what practice and, uh, is, is for, really. So yeah, not too bad, all told. Yes, it's an ideal day for you today because it's uh, no pressure at all and uh, getting the thing set up for tomorrow. I, I like the idea of a 650 <laughs> horsepower single no seater being no pressure. But <laughs> Yeah, uh, to to an extent, yes. It's um, if you lose a run for whatever reason, it's not the end of the world. No. Nah. Uh, and how do you see the seasons that so far? How it's played out for you? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been it really intense, and it's been a constant journey to uh, try and get more out of the car. We've struggled with the engine over the last two years, so we made a, a big leap uh, before Gersten, which was really encouraging because I think. You do get to a point where you think, oh, God, have we gone the right way? Have we gone too small on the capacity or whatever? But, you know, that's that's been really good. And obviously having the Scott and Wallace so close all the time and, and you know, Matt and, and now Trevor today, who's just gone fastest in that last run, um, just makes it a real privilege, really enjoyable thing to be involved with. And you, you're constantly getting more out of yourself. I think a lot of people ask me, why are the records going so often? I don't think the cars have changed too much. Um, it's just that everyone is pushing each other. And with that competition from the other drivers, you're pushing yourself a little bit harder, which is why your times are coming down in relation to everybody else as it, well. Invariably, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, that extra bit of power we found helps. But, yeah, we, we're just getting more, of our, more out of the package, more out of ourselves as drivers. And, um, yeah, class of, class of 2022 is really strong. Um, any one of the top five drivers is capable of winning at any one meeting. So, you know, that's hugely uh, exciting, if a little stressful at times. <laughs> uh, have you got any more upgrades planned for this year? Or are you going to stick with what you've got? Um, I think a good night's sleep would be a bit of an upgrade. <laughs> I didn't sleep well last night. My hay fever is a bit, a bit oh, bad. Right. But, uh, no, not really. I think um, there's a lot to be said for consistency with the car and knowing what you're getting in and having the dampers the way you you know you don't want you don't necessarily want surprises particularly at a place like like this right now we come on to what was happening the other week at goodwood and the festival of speed and the mcmurty or mcmurtry that's it yeah yeah <laughs> um some spectacular footage mm. was it as exhilarating from behind the wheel as it looked from uh, on the on board I mean, the, the first thing to say is um, that is an incredible event. Uh, there's 65,000 people there each day. Um, so there's a, there's a fair amount of existential pressure, if that's the right word, um, to, you know, not put it in the bales or, or, you know, do the wrong thing. But the car itself is just a, a ballistic missile. It's, it's such an incredible thing. Um, for those that don't know, the McMurtry Spieling is a full electric fan car basically um, so it only de it derives 90% of its downforce from a fan so it always has two tons of downforce so you get the most incredible launch speeds and and you also get uh, a brown cloud of dust following you up there yeah people kept coming up to say is the engine blown up I said well you'd have a job blowing this engine up because it's, <laughs> it's, it's a load of magnets yes. um, but yeah it's quite dramatic and I think as an electric car um, for those people who sit on the fence with electric the fan makes a sort of jet engine type noise so mm. you do get that visceral aural experience from it perhaps not as much as you know the firestorm or something but uh it's going a long way to get that that theater back which yeah, i'll be yeah. honest lacks in some electric cars you know and uh, um, what do you think is the potential of that particular car well, I was talking to some uh, one of the Avon engineers, um, you know, really the tyre is the limit at the moment because it's such a massive amount of force. So it's developing a, a tyre carcass and a compound that can live with that level of, of performance. You know, for a car to be 950 kilos, a 3G in the corners um, and 2G off the start line, which is about what, what it will do, you know, how do you make a tyre to do that? So it's been a fantastic process working with Avon to try and make a tyre that will actually live with that um, but the, also you have to say that the driver becomes a limit at some point you know logically if you say it's 
15, 16 seconds faster than it was last year. If they go with a lighter battery and you know better gearbox or whatever, um, it was worth saying that that battery pack in that car will do f between five and ten laps of Silverstone International. Wow! With uh, a significant amount of for, um, power. So basically, if if it was allowed to run on a British hill climb course, it could run the whole day on one charge. Yeah, it could probably run multiple. You know, it's a 60 kilowatt hour battery. So if you do the WLTP test, which is uh, basically a road range test for road cars, it's it should do 300 miles on that battery. Right. Um, so we could run, say, 20 minutes at a GT3 pace, let's say 400 horsepower. Um, so, yeah, it would be more more than enough to do, you know, maybe a quarter of a season if you were careful with it. Um, we would condition the battery every run at, at Goodwood just, just to avoid any... Um, you know, uh, potential mishaps, shall we say? But <laughs> yes. no, that's that's a, a not actually optimised for that hill. You know, it could mm. do a lot longer events. It could do Euros. It could do Pikes Peak. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it, it, the potential is it, almost enormous, it, endless. Yeah. Um, and and to be a big part, to be a part of that. Sorry, um, and to work with that team, uh, who most of whom I met at uni. Uh, it's been it's been just amazing. We brought Max Chilton in, who's an uh, ex F1, ex IndyCar driver, and he's just taken it to another level in terms of yeah, uh, you know, familiarity with he, three and four G lateral corner. <laughs> he seemed incredibly impressed in his uh, interview uh, at uh, Goodwood. Yeah, you you couldn't ask for a nicer um, co-driver, really. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I share with my mum and dad and wife, and that's all brilliant. Um, but no, Max was was great, and he took he he really respected. Once he got to know a little bit more about hill climbing, and he saw the engine. I mean, I showed him a picture of the Firestorm engine bay, and he said, "What a, what a wonderful bit of uh, engineering, engineering that is." Yeah. And trying to break down that perception that hill climbing is is perhaps not as technologically advanced as it is. You know, and you see things like, with, you know, Damien Bradley's car, mm. uh, you know, the, uh, the Firestorm, the, the GR59 and, and, and Trevor's car, for example, there is some serious kit on those. Um, and they have actually learned a little bit, I hope, from, from my experience of driving these cars. Well, when we were chatting in the panel before, you mentioned uh, future projects and a new car coming out. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I immortal, uh, I uttered the immortal words of how hard can it be to design a car? Um, and that was about six years ago. Um, and actually, it's been a journey of discovering just how ignorant uh, I am about cars. Um, and actually, I've grown an enormous amount of respect for anyone who's ever done that. But whether you're building a, you know, a kit car or you're designing something, whatever it is. Um, so it's been fascinating to understand just how little uh, I, I knew before and I probably still don't. But I, I wanted to find, like, create a big car, in inverted commas, um, where... I, so from a slightly different approach on a cost basis, because, you know, at the moment, the, the, there, are, there are ways you can get into hill climbing that are expensive and there are ways that are cheap and I kind of wanted to find a way through the middle um, whereby you could have big car performance and and um, small car budget but we've completely messed that up <laughs> it's cost a bloody fortune <laughs> um, so the code name was originally P40 to try and do it for 40 grand um, and suffice it to say that's uh, <laughs> it's more like P <laughs> more like P45. Yeah, Dad's it? calling it P45. But but Mum and Dad have been brilliant. You know, Mum has been laminating nose cones. Um, she's far better laminator than I am. So we've done a lot of pre-preg carbon. Trevor Willis has been amazing. Andy from DJ, well, actually all the DJ have been uh, really really helpful. Kind of looking at CAD drawings and going, you, you don't want to, don't, you don't want to do it like that. You don't want to do it that way. No, yeah. that makes energy and it shouldn't. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it will be. Um, you'll have the old V6, the Opal two and a half, which will be, you know, 400 horsepower thereabouts. Um, it looks quite aggressive. It's quite low. Mm -hmm. It's sort of Predator GR59. Oh, right. It's a bit of a hybrid of, of all those things. But I'm not quite ready to to, to show anyone, you know, other than close friends yet, because it's <laughs> it's one of those things you get really, really self-conscious about. And perhaps you shouldn't, you know, but well, you, you do. I, I think you become protective of your project it's your like, little yeah. baby and you yeah. want to make sure it's right before everybody sees it absolutely yeah. i mean i show more people you know as the time as the project goes by but we've got uh, i think something that looks quite um nice 
my, my brother, who's a civil engineer and quite a serious chap, um, <laughs> and is you know competitive as all brothers are, he looked at the uprights, front uprights, and he went, hmm, credible. <laughs> um, not incredible, just credible. credible. So they, they hold the wheels on, and I have rolled it through the garage and gone. Right. We, but what a lovely thing to do with mum, dad, Debbie. Um, well, yeah, the, fa- the whole family. Involved. Yeah, and I think there's that hope that if you crash the car, that it's a couple of weekends in the garage rather than um, unknown bills, for example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I, I have so much respect for people like Graham, uh, Trevor, who does a lot of his own stuff, Steve Owen, all those guys, DJ Gould, you know, they, it is a massive amount of work. Um, to build a car like that, you know, you're liking yeah, to, you know, I spent, I spent a week modeling top hats, um, <laughs> which is something you use to space bolts off yeah, uh, yeah. bearings. Um, and you just don't imagine it's ever going to take that long. Yeah. The man hours involved. Oh, yeah, ridiculous. Horrendous. Yeah. Or mum yeah. hours in this case. <laughs> <Mom hours>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, great news for the future. Yeah. And so. uh, thanks for coming along and giving us a little bit of a chat and an insight into all your projects. Yeah, pleasure. And uh, here's hoping that the second half of the season is as successful as the first half. Well, let's, let's hope that we have a good, you know, safe uh, event um, tomorrow. And yeah, the championship continues to be close and, you know, I, I, it's too early to say what, what's going to happen. This it, obviously, I've been looking at Wallace's sectors, and they are um, compelling or credible, should I say? <laughs> well, <laughs> so. well I, I did. I did notice in that wet um, practice run yeah. that he was still pushing. Oh, yeah. and yeah. You know, I mean, when, it, when, it, when the car steps out in the wet, yeah, it's far more noticeable. Mm. And he just was on it yeah you know, I mean, he's, he's in he's in tip top form when it comes to Harewood I'm, I'm going to make him that. blush I'm going to make him blush I know but he is amazing up here I mean it, yeah. it's just looking at some of the splits and it's so accurate um, we, we're quite good at high speed I think in the firestorm you know places like mm. Dune suit the car really well um, um, but we've we've still got stuff to find in the low speed uh, whether that's me or the car I suspect it's probably me um, but yeah no, that, what, a, what a great group of guys you know what a lovely Absolutely. group of guys and a, a, a um, uh, an amazing set of talents, um, which 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 is what I think makes this this se- season particularly, but in in this sport, mm. um, so good at the moment. Well, you know, well I, c- I can always remember back in I think it was about the 1980s, and a driver came into the paddock, uh, having had a little moment, right, and before he could get out of the car, the other people in the same class had got it up on the jacks and were taking wheels yeah, up and everything. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the spirit of hill climbing. Absolutely. And do you know what? I was really surprised um, at Goodwood. It's actually a similar vibe there. All oh, right. Um, I, I wanted to say, really, that, it, it, you know, it is a, a really friendly event. It was lovely to have Tim Wilson there, who's our championship mm. coordinator. He's um, senior clerk. All uh, oh, right. And then a couple of marshals that I know, a lot, you know, a few people... Um, were there so I gave Dave Wickham a hug in the top paddock yes I noticed um, that which was lovely because it can be quite a a strange place when there's so many people and you think so many different media Uh, things did did you get awestruck by all the uh, named drivers Uh, yeah I mean (laughs) you know first time I met Max I was like hello (laughs) Um, but yeah they all they're all lovely I mean Corinne Chandock actually remember me from last year oh right and he didn't have to do that no no so that's it is a really nice event, and I think the, the, the um, I would encourage people to go and support it because it's actually, uh, you know, it, it's 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 showing the best of British engineering and technology and drivers. And I know a lot of people would like to see a British uh, championship car there. And I, I, you know, I, I think we have to be realistic. It's um, it's not what the event's about, really. But it'd be lovely. Um, and I think that people like Scott and Trevor with their multiple championships should should, you know, uh, aspire to to do it. But you know, it's it's something I, we've got to. Uh, I, I think the biggest problem you might have is if they had a class with five of the top guys there, and what would happen to the hill record, well, and it might put a few people off at most Sport UK. If well, that I I don't know. When you, it, it's a fun family event, you know, and you if you turn it into a competition like that, you you've got to question. Who benefits from that? Yeah. Really, you know that that event is a, a, a an, an exercise in demonstrating the best of British motorsport, yes. and yeah. you you could argue that, that you know we're we're part of that. Um, but you know maybe one day maybe we will we do a demo run or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just think it's a great event. It's been it's been brilliant to be part of it. Everyone in in this, um, the paddock today has been absolutely lovely and did some nice things. So that that's been good, and I'm just glad to have been a part of that that record. 
effort, mm. as it were. Yeah, the record-breaking team. Yeah, that was just because it, it yeah. certainly came across from watching it on telly that it was a team effort. Yeah, everybody was putting in. Yeah, and yeah. wanting to do it's better. A, such a lovely group. We had a mm. teams call on Wednesday because, like I say, half of them I know from uni. And they were, uh, they were, it was emotional in spades. You know, we've got this, this guy, David McMurch, he put some funding together to set the project up. And then six years later, bang, you know, outright record at, at Goodwood. And believe you me, that is a quick cut. That is a properly fast yeah. cut. Um, well, you could, you could tell that just by watching it off the line. Yeah. From, from the camera position when you're behind it, and it just went boom, and you thought, crikey. That launch is amazing. Like I say, two tons of downforce all the time. Um, we're actually drive shaft limited. Right, if you can believe yeah, yeah. it. Well, you yeah, yeah. Sure, you know, yeah, um, I, could, I can imagine. So it's effectively um, infinite acceleration pace with possibilities, uh, depending on how much torque you can run at the motor and so on. So, um, yeah, I think we're doing. If you do a 1.9 second 64 foot at a hill climb, you're doing really well. Um, and I think we're doing like 1.3s, 1.4s. Um, so yeah, uh, really. Um, uncomfortable <laughs> initially yeah. um, but amazing and and yeah. that that technology um battery electric vehicles you know that's a real uh growth area it's something i think we've got to embrace um and if they look like that in the future then but you know that's great. right yeah, it, happy they, it looks fantastic it does, yeah. well thanks very much for popping in alex my pleasure well, thank you very much thank you cheers mate